views, ideas, and content of well seekers and their guests are their own opinions, and you should always seek additional professional help around any of the issues discussed here on Well Seekers. Hello, and welcome back to Well Seekers. I'm Lucia, and we are so excited that you are here with us today on your journey to help you find and feel better from the mind down. For everyone that's been a part of our family. Thanks for coming back. For anyone new who's listening, thanks for joining us. We love to have people join our family. Um, so hit the subscribe button up in the corner um, and never miss information about a new, sto- a new show um, or any of our upcoming things that are happening um, or episodes that we release. You can come to our website, wellseekers.com and join our newsletter. But in 2024, we are going to have some big changes. So we're excited to announce those as we head into the new year and our new set of shows that I'm incredibly excited about. For everyone that's listened to the last few episodes, you know, we've been talking about manifestation in this series. And we have had two powerful conversations where we've learned multiple different things about manifestation, what it means, how it can apply to your life, what it doesn't mean. Um, And what I've learned so far, and I think I said this in the first episode, is that my gut feeling was that there was going to be a lot of different definitions um, of what manifestation means, how to use it, how to apply it, and everything in between. And so far, we've been spot on. There have been a lot of different definitions. Um, And our next guest is going to be talking about manifestation, manifesting, and using more of an emotional emotional, spiritual approach. And that's one of the reasons I wanted her on because she brings this very different layer to the conversation that we haven't gotten to yet. Her name is Carolini Arco. um, And Carolini is going to be joining us and talking about how she sees manifestation. She has a phenomenal website that we're going to link to about her teachings, what manifestation is, again, what it isn't, and how it really all connects spiritually, emotionally, physically, and how you can use it for the good, for expansion, and for power in your life. So Carolini is going to join us here in a moment. So stick tight. We'll be right back here on Well Seekers. You're listening to Well Seekers, a show where the journey is just as important as the destination. Welcome back. We are so excited to welcome our next guest in this series on manifesting, Carolini Arco. Carolini is a spiritual mentor, Reiki master teacher, past life healer, ICF ACC life coach, and breathwork facilitator. She stands for human evolution and believes the best way to create change is by awakening personal power and self-leadership. She runs her global company, Arco, from a tropical island south of Brazil, where I wish I was right now. Um, and she's proud to be a portal for all spiritual seekers, creating a more prosperous future for themselves and humanity as a whole. Carolini, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Lucia. It's a pleasure. First of all, I do wish I was. What What is the name of the island that you, that you live on, Carolini? Well, the name is Florianopolis. And if anybody's looking for their perfect holiday destination, I cannot recommend it here enough. So come on over. (laughs) You're going to love it. It's about like 10 degrees in New York, Connecticut right now. So, (laughs) Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's quite different. We're at the 25 um, Celsius range here. So definitely different. (laughs) Amazing. Amazing. We've been talking about manifesting and what it is from a clinical perspective and what it isn't from a clinical perspective. And really what what our guests so far have really talked about is the spiritual elements of manifesting and how there's really power in bringing spirituality into it. Um, mm-hmm. So, which is why I wanted to talk to you because of your background and um, your work with spiritual seekers. So thank you so much for being here. Yeah, perfect. I am so excited that more and more people are wanting to dive into these topics and are just open to the idea that things that we can't always comprehend through the logical mind. So I hope I can share a little bit of light in how how to accept these concepts and apply them in our lives today. Can you first tell us what your definition of manifesting is? Because one thing I've noticed in my past guests is everyone has a different definition, which I find so fascinating. What is your definition of manifesting? 
Well, for me, manifestation is nothing more than the ownership of who we truly are in the world and claiming our places back as the creator of reality in this web of co-creation that we live in. So manifestation is a natural consequence of us awakening our sovereign power, our free will, and actually using our mental and emotional capacities to shape reality in a way that's more fulfilling to us. So it's not something separate, it's not a a practice that you do, it's it's something that is just very natural to the human being that we're starting to remember and consciously take advantage of once again. Tell me more about that or break it down for (laughs) our listeners a bit. So tell me, first of all, for those that don't know what sovereign power is, can you explain that concept a bit? For sure. So sovereign power to me is being aware that we have the ability to choose at every moment, right? And one of the ways that I like to simplify that is, and I'll invite you to do this with me, right, Lucha, is decide to raise your hands for a moment. Okay. And decide to kind of rub them together. Okay. Did you do that? Was that easy? Yes, I did. And I loved it, actually, because I like <laughs> getting some blood above my <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah. So in that moment, you just had a choice to make. You could choose to not raise your hands or you could choose to do that. And you took the choice and you used it. So sovereign power is remembering that we have a choice around life. We have a choice how we respond to life. We have a choice of what kind of thoughts we entertain or not, what kind of emotions we invoke or not. So it's coming out of a place of my circumstances are defining me at every moment and I'm just going with the flow in a response way, right? I'm just reacting and responding and to actually take back the ability to choose. How do I want my life to feel at every moment? How do I want my life to look at every moment? And I think the more aware we are that we have a choice for how we are responding to things at every moment, the more we are awakening this sovereign power And the more we awaken the sovereign power, the more we start clarifying what it is exactly that I want my life to look like and feel like. And through the clarification of that, we start manifesting the things that will actually be this life that we desire. So So, interesting. mm -hmm. So, so manifesting has become sort of, I feel like a buzzword and the reason I asked about your interpretation is because I love your interpretation of it. Some people think of it as I, if I think good thoughts, everything I want is going to happen. And if I don't think good thoughts, then bad things are going to happen. Does that make sense? Of course. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a wildly misconception that has taken mm-hmm. place in the industry, right? Because when we go back to the origins of manifestation and to the essence of it, it is actually telling us that we are manifesting at every single moment. So I've manifested my cup of coffee when I went into my espresso machine this morning and I pressed and I put the grains in and I pressed the button. I've manifested a cup of coffee. I've manifest, I'm manifesting talking to you in this moment, right? It's not just things that fall out of the sky. It's not just conditioning, uh, conditioning with our mood. It is something that we are. It's a way that we are in the world. We are manifestors by nature. Is mainly a question of are we manifesting things consciously or unconsciously? So could you give us an example of maybe even something in your own life, Carolini, where you've used the concept of manifesting and what the outcome was? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm, for sure. So I have so many examples <laughs> of manifestation because yeah. I first I first uh, consciously learned about manifestation, I would say, in 2009 when I was traveling through New Zealand at the time. And I think, you know, as most people here, we got exposed to the movie The Secret, right? And I remember like watching the movie and being completely fascinated by it. So I had this iPod thing and I downloaded the movie into my iPod and I would have a 30 minute walk to work that I would do every day. And I would listen to the last 30 minutes of the movie on my walk to work every single day because it's like a very inspirational 30 minutes, you know, at the end of the movie. Mm. And I started playing with this concept of, okay, like, let's see what I can manifest today. So I would ask for very specific things. I would ask, I want to see a coin in front of this specific building. And then on my walk to work, I would grab that coin and it was right there where I had saw it in my mind. And then I was like, okay, I want to manifest a free Starbucks coffee. And then I would go in front of his Starbucks and they would be giving away coffee. 
And then there was this one time that I was walking to work. At the time, I had a temporary visa in New Zealand. I'm originally from Brazil, right? Mm-hmm. And I was walking to work and this thought crossed my mind, which was, wouldn't it be so nice if I got a job offer that would allow me to stay here permanently? And it was just like this random thought. It just crossed my mind. It left and I got to work. And as soon as I got to work, I'm not kidding you, at the exact same day, my manager pulls me aside and she tells me, I'm really enjoying the work that you're doing here. You know, you're a very valuable employee. We actually want to offer you a permanent visa if you continue working for us. And my jaw was like on the ground because I can't, I, I can't believe it. I just had this thought of what if this would happen? It would be so nice. And literally 30 minutes later, that it was in front of my eyes, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of story where manifestation worked for me because I had the thought <laughs> and it's, and, and in the frequency of that thought was so clear that it came in such a fast timing. But it's also an example of how manifestation did not work for me because I wasn't specific on what kind of work I actually wanted to be doing. What kind of job offer did I actually want or not? So even though I accepted the offer, very soon later, I discovered that that wasn't where I wanted to be professionally and it wasn't the the job that was right for me. So I ended up letting that opportunity go. So this is just like one of the examples of how to use manifestation. More recently, for an example, I was living in Canada for the last 10 years and I decided to move back to this beautiful island in Brazil. And one of the big goals that I had was to live on the most beautiful home that I had ever lived in my life. And I would sit back and I would, you know, like feel into the sensations and the emotions of how this home would feel like. And I couldn't get a lot of visions, but I could really get into the feeling. Now, we arrived in this island and one day after, I went on our first day of house hunting met this realtor and I asked her, do you have any home that you think are going to be perfect for us? She's like, well, there's this one that is in the market, but I wasn't even going to show anybody because it's not everybody likes it. It's very much in the middle of the woods and things like that. I'm like, that sounds perfect. Take me there. So she took us to this home and it was the moment that I walked in it. I was like, this is the perfect place. I could not imagine a better place to live. So we ended up moving into the house and that's where we live now in in Florianopolis, right? So manifestation is really just like, I feel like these experiences, they have shown me that the clearer I am on what is exactly that I want and the more I can hold the frequency of exactly what I want while at the same time letting go of the expectation that it needs to happen at a certain time frame, the easier it comes to me. And, and it is something that we get to practice on every area of life. So I gave a few examples. I gave the example of career, the example of home, but we get to practice this in every area of life. And one of the simplest ways to start is to ask ourselves, how do I want to feel in this area of my life? How do I want to feel in my career? How do I want to feel in my home? How do I want to feel in my relationships? And by getting so clear on that, we can start evoking those feelings consistently. So, I mean, I love that example. Is there a a time though where you feel like, because this is where sometimes I get confused on manifesting and I'd love your opinion from a spiritual perspective or just from your perspective in general, from personal experience. But Mm -hmm. what if you're doing that and nothing happens? (laughs) Has that ever happened to you? Like where you're like, "I, I am so clear as day. I am writing this down. I am speaking it to the universe, right? I believe in a higher power, like talking to my higher power about it, right? Talking to God about it and nothing happens. Yeah, I feel like that's more, how can I explain that? Because manifestation is not really about the thing. It's not about the home, you know? I didn't know how my perfect home would look like, but I knew exactly how I would feel inside that house. So I feel like when we are asking for things or they're not happening to us is because we're so attached to an idea of how things should look like instead of focusing on how do I want to feel in these things. So a perfect example of this is let's say that you meet somebody, you know, like you're single and you meet somebody online and you think that that person is the love of your life and you really want to get married to them. So you're manifesting that they're going to propose to you and you're manifesting that this is your future and that's what's going to happen. And then it ends up not happening. That person never proposed to you. 
your relationship doesn't go forward, then you ask yourself, but where did I go wrong? What happened here? And generally what happened there is that you were so attached to an idea that it had to be that specific person that you lost focus of, but how do I want to feel in a relationship? And how I want to feel in a relationship, you know, I want to feel connected. I want to feel safe. I want to feel loved. It might be with that person or not. But if we're just focusing on, I want that person and we're not focusing on, actually, that's how I want to feel. And maybe that person is going to be the one that's going to make me feel those things or maybe not. And I'm open to figuring it out. I'm open to more possibilities. If we're focusing on how do I want to feel over everything, it's it's inevitable that it's going to come to us. It's absolutely inevitable. When we feel that it's not happening, it's because we're still kind of in a self-righteousness way saying, it has to be this way. It has to happen by this time and it has to be this way. And self-righteousness energy does not work (laughs) or it rarely works with the universe. Mm. So that that makes more sense. But has there ever been a time either with your clients or with yourself? Because I can think of a specific example. And I do agree with you. When I feel like sometimes I would call it getting in my own way, right? Like Mm -hmm. self-limiting myself by some exact rigid plan that I think, right, it needs to unfold in the way. And then when it doesn't, it's like, well, what did I do wrong? Is that sort of in line with what you're saying? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, like, I'll give you a very simple example as well. So I've opened my business in 2018. And at that time I was speaking to a Brazilian audience and I had like a very solid strategy for how I wanted things to go. And I was, I was launching things in a very specific way. So I would have this big event, this big launch event. And at that time, what I was manifesting was a very successful business, right? I wanted money. I wanted visibility. I wanted all those things. And I would do all these events and it was crazy. I would manifest like an incredible amount of people joining for my free events. And yet when it was time to actually make an offer, nobody would buy. And for three years out of my life, I was like, I'm trying to manifest this thing. Why is is it not happening to me? It doesn't matter what I do. I'm taking the action. I'm aligning with my, like I'm doing all the things. Why is it not happening? Why is it not happening? And I had to to take a break for a bit for, for, for a period of time. And when I actually returned to it, I understood that it wasn't happening because I was so attached that it had to happen through these launches. It has to happen through that offer that I had. And if it didn't, it meant that I was wrong or that I had done something wrong. And and so when I came back in business in 2000 and beginning of 2020, I was so clear that I was going to do this in a pleasurable way because why did I want to feel? I wanted to feel like I was helping people. I wanted to feel fulfilled in the ways that I spent my day. I wanted to feel connected to my craft and to the people who were coming to me. And so when I came back in business, I let go of all ideas of how this needed to happen, through which avenue it needed to happen. And I just focused, this is going to work my way. I'm going to feel this way. That's how it's going to be. And I was so open to listening to guidance, to listen to little pulls that I received. So I had this pull. I was like, you know what? I don't actually think it's in Portuguese. I had this true desire of like, let's explore an English audience. Let's broaden this idea that I that I have to do things in Portuguese. Maybe I can do things in English. And it was quite incredible how I've made that shift and I've put how I wanted to feel in my business as the priority and things picked up really fast and they've grown quite fast over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that's an example for you of like, it felt like it wasn't working for three years. But the thing is, I never gave up on the vision, right? I've been holding this vision of being successful for the last six years. And only in the last two years, I've actually experienced that success in the ways that I wanted. But for four years, I had to hold that vision without evidence. And people were so fast with just like, oh, it hasn't happened. It's, it's, it means that it's not for me. If it was meant for me, it would have come already. I'm, I'm letting you go. I don't even want this anymore. Mm. And then we say it didn't work. But are we, are, we, are we being resilient enough to keep on the path even when it feels like it's not working? Because that's where the work lies. <laughs> mm-hmm. The work lies in the moments when it feels like it's not working. If it's always working, we're, we're not learning from it. We're not growing through it. Mm-hmm. But when it feels like it's not working and we hold the faith anyway, that's when we're in our place of mastery. That's the sovereign power that I'm talking about. To choose the vision over and over again, even when it feels like it's not here yet. Mm. 
So, so let go of time expectations. So like, let's say, for example, someone's looking to buy a house right now and they have their perfect house written out. They're taking all the action, right? They, but the market is just terrible in the United States. I don't know what it is (laughs) across Mm -hmm. the world, but the inventory is absolutely low and the prices are ridiculously high and they can't buy a home, let's say, because of the situation. Would you say manifesting is not working? Or would you just say, let go of the expectation of time and keep manifesting? Yeah, I think I think the best thing that we can do when we're trying to manifest everything is, can I tap into the feelings of what I desire in, in the now? So what is it that I desire inside having this new home? Like, is it a feeling of safety? Is it a feeling of security? Is it a feeling of accomplishment? Is it a feeling of spaciousness? Like, when I see myself signing those papers, this home is mine, what is it that I feel when I do this? And can I somehow, through my imagination, bring myself to experience these feelings right now, whether I have the home yet or not? And can I continue to feel these feelings knowing that it's going to come, it's going to come, it's going to come, whether it's in a year, whether it's in two years, whether it's in five years, it's going to come, it's going to come, it's going to come. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep feeling those feelings for however long it takes. In this place, is like, it's not dependent of the market. It's not dependent of the external circumstances, but it's how much control do I have over my mental and emotional space? How much mastery am I utilizing here? And then, you know, and the more we tap into these feelings and we're not waiting for the thing to be here in order to feel what we want to feel, the more miracles start to happen. <laughs> you you know, a really powerful sort of a powerful point that I think often gets lost in manifesting, which is that feeling, right? So let's, if we use the feeling of safety, for example, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have the home, how can you create safety for yourself without the home? Because that's what you're really craving while you work towards or the climate changes for you to then walk into your home, right? But what if you haven't identified that? How do you help people identify it's actually not the home, for example, it's the safety? Does that make sense? A hundred percent. And a very easy way to do that is get yourself like in a good day, you know, a day that you're in a good mood, because when we do this in a bad mood, it often doesn't work. But a day that you're feeling good, you're feeling energized, you're feeling hopeful, sit with yourself in reflection and actually start imagining this future. Imagining the home, imagine yourself stepping into the home and get so clear. How am I feeling in this vision? What are the feelings that are here? Mm. It's not what I want. What do I want to feel that I believe this home will make me feel? Okay, now we identified, oh, when I see myself in this vision, I feel safe, beautiful. How does safety feel in your body? Where is it? Is there a shape, a color, a texture to it? Can you become so keenly aware of how this feeling of safety resonates through you? Now, the beautiful thing here is most of the time, if we do that, this person is going to get to this stage. They're going to feel the safety. The safety. They're going to feel the feelings of being in the house, even though the home is not here yet. And if they have done that in a moment without having the thing manifested in front of them, it means that they can do it over and over and over again. They don't actually need the thing They just need to create the neural pathway to the feeling that they want to experience. Really powerful and important distinction. And I I, I mean, I love that exercise you just walked people through, right? To Mm -hmm. uncover what is the feeling. And then if you can't accomplish the feeling in that way, what are the alternative ways in the time being, right? And maybe Mm -hmm. that, sort of hallway is the destination, right? And Mm -hmm. you don't even get to where you originally set out. Maybe you don't even get the home, but you've created something so special and magnificent in the meantime that fulfilled that need, that that's actually what you were manifesting. Exactly. That's exactly, that's what you were actually manifesting. Right. You've manifested what you wanted to manifest, which was the emotional state. Yeah. The 
outside circumstances will meet you there as long as you can keep invoking and keep connected to that emotional state. Mm. So powerful. So, so powerful. And I think sometimes where we are with manifesting, because it's become this buzzword, it's like, think of a house and you'll get a house. Think of a car and you'll get a car. Think of a husband and you'll get a, I'm just using examples that Mm -hmm. I've heard people say, and you'll get a husband or a significant other, right? And um, when it doesn't work, I hear on the flip side, this huge, what am I doing wrong, right? But the, it's not that anyone was doing anything wrong. It's that the intention wasn't exactly accurate. Really, really powerful. Exactly, yeah. It's so important that we put the focus on what really matters because let's be honest, Lucha, how many people do you know that have everything and yet they cannot feel how they thought these things would make them feel? And perhaps you've had had an experience like that in your life. I know that I have. You achieved something you wanted so much and then it doesn't feel like you thought it would. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You you can't really, you know, like, so the more we are codependent on something happening outside of us in order to make us feel how we actually want to feel, the less power we have because we are dependent on something that is outside of us. The place where we have control and the place where manifestation happens is in the mastery of my emotional and mental space. Mm -hmm. And that is always within our control, independently of circumstances. Absolutely. And I think that it has been skewed, the messaging, like social media, um, uh, specifically when I see on social media or I hear from people I work with, right? Like, manifesting sort of gone wrong (laughs) when they're having the intention just not exactly be what it's supposed to be. It's not the outcome. It's the emotional process that is the outcome. Exactly. Um, And if we can all live in the emotional process, if we can all just honor what we want to feel, wouldn't the world be so much better? Wouldn't we stop running and chasing and being like crazy? Like I need this to prove something. (laughs) Yeah, no, truly, truly. I just had two more questions if you have the time. Yes. Okay. One is about, I know that spirit, you talk about spirituality. How would you define to those thinking that, because I feel on the opposite side, some people are like, oh, manifesting is all spirituality, right? Tell me how you view the connection between spirituality and manifesting. So I think like spirituality is a very personal concept to every human being, right? And I never try to come from a place of, I know what spirituality is because Again, like everybody has their own way of interacting with it. So for me, what spirituality is, is a feeling of connection more than anything. And is how connected do I feel with everything, with myself, with my environment, with humanity, with the world, with everything. And the more I can stretch my feeling of connection, the more um, wholesome I feel. And I feel like the true meaning of spirituality, you know, To heal is to make it whole. So spirituality for me is wholeness, is unity. And I know this is a bit of an abstract way of putting it. Um, So when I am in that context of connection and spirituality for me is to be connected, connected to my earthly self, my soul self, to something that I can't even see. And if I am connected, and this is how I actually like really started uh, deciding to use manifestation so powerfully for myself and started to teaching about other people because if I am connected to humanity as a whole, I care so much about the planets. I care so much about people. And I truly desire to leave a better future behind me. You know, I know we're in a moment of a lot of transformation. There's a lot of stress happening. There's many opportunities to be in fear. And that's not the future that I desire for the planet and for humanity. So I find that when I know I have choice and I know I have a power and I know I can manifest things, I am actively shaping the future of the world as a whole. Mm. And and that's for me, is like very spiritual to think about that because I know that I'm going to not be here anymore. You know, uh, my body is going to come back to the earth. But the frequency that I infused on this planet is going to live on. I I know that this is not, you know, like a a very logical answer, but I don't think there, there, there is a way for both to be separate. Spirituality and manifestation is, they're all one and the same. You know, manifestation is 
a spiritual concept. It's part of us discovering our spiritual self and it's part of us taking our place as the creator. Mm. And that, of course, comes from a mentality of thinking that spirit is you and you are spirit, right? It's not separate from you. And it's taking your place as that. Mm-hmm. That that makes sense. No, that does make sense. I, I'm curious, Caroline, if someone is just awakening to manifesting and they want to get started in practicing it more in their day to day, do you have any suggestions for them? The main suggestion, um, and this is, you know, like for, for anybody and for everything is to start developing a practice of intimacy with yourself, whatever way that looks like. Mm. to in, instead of like just going straight to okay i want to manifest that thing let me go and do that let me do that like actually start getting really present with how am i feeling every single day you know perhaps get a journal and take notes of what are the emotions that i felt today what was my level of energy what are the thoughts that i had that were good or were bad to me like we have to create intimacy with ourselves before we can just go ahead and manifest something you know what I mean? Like if we're always trying to manifest something, we're not really present to what's actually happening here. We're not in that emotional landscape. So starting to become so familiar with our emotional landscape, what am I feeling every day? What are the mm, predominant emotions that pass through my body at any given moment? And then from there, start asking, is this how I want to feel really? Mm. Is this who I want to be? Or is there other things that I want you to be experiencing every day? Do I want to be experiencing more joy, more pleasure, more spaciousness? Uh, what can I do that's going to give me those things? And then after that, we can start thinking of, okay, what do I want to manifest outside of me? But before we have to get so clear, where am I at right now in my emotional state? And where do I want to be in my emotional state? And what can I do right now that's going to help me? create those emotions that I desire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thing will come after. And this is not what the the answer that most people want. Most people want to like write your wishes 55 times a day on a journal for five days in a row and you're going to be golden. Like that's not what most people want to hear, but that is the sustainable way of doing it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I love this way. This is so in line with, I, I love the word get intimate with yourself, right? I think that sometimes, again, just the message is sort of what you said, write down these things and hope they happen instead of create this intimate emotional relationship with yourself where you identify your needs and find a pathway there that could look a lot different than the way you thought it had to look, which is a powerful, powerful thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, 100%. No, I just want to say that it takes courage to do this work, you know, and it takes a a level of presence that we have not been conditioned to cultivate in our society. We have been conditioned to go for the quick answer, the phone, the Netflix, the whatever, right? So it's uh, it takes presence to come back and just say, my life is so worthy of me. Mm -hmm. My life, I am so worthy of sitting with me. And I actually have Shiver saying that, like, I, I, I matter, you know, like me being with myself matters so much. It is so enough that I'm taking moment to be with myself. And I think it's in the decision of I'm going to cultivate this presence. I'm going to be so intimate with myself that I understand all my nooks and crooks. I understand all of my ways. I understand all of my patterns. I learn to love all that I am, that we start awakening this sovereign power that's going to let us create absolute miracles in the world. Beautiful. Carolini Arco, thank you so much for taking the time. And for anyone interested in connecting with Carolini, we're going to put all of her links below um, so you can reach out and find out more about her on social media. Carolini, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Lucia. It has been a pleasure. We'll be right back. Today's lifestyle demands the best in wireless. And with Pulse Cellular, you have the best options available. Switch to Pulse Cellular for unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data. Coast to coast with no contracts, no credit checks, and no overage fees. One line for $65 or four lines for just $45 each, including hotspot, Wi-Fi calling, and 50 gigs per line. And for all you travelers, we got you covered in Canada and Mexico. Plus, text and data in over 210 countries worldwide. All with the best phones or bring your own that's pretty awesome get the best user experience on mobile at pulsecellular.com 
Thanks for being part of the Seekerhood. We couldn't do this without you. Now, back to the show. Thank you so much again to Carolini for joining us. We are so honored and grateful to all our guests who come on the podcast and talk about their experiences and their knowledge and their wisdom. And especially in this topic that, again, normally I'm talking a lot about research. My opening is triple the time um, and my closing. But with such a broad topic and definition, I thought it was best if we just let the guests do most of the sharing, talking about what manifestation means to them. So thank you to everyone who has shared so far. I've learned a lot and I've learned about some powerful concepts and how to apply them. So thank you to Carolini and the rest of our guests. If you haven't followed us yet, make sure to follow us at Wellseekers. You can follow me at Lucia Naz. All of our links will be below. You can have um, follow Carolini at her links as well. But mostly we just want to say thank you. It's how we close out every show. Just thanking you for being a part of our family, for taking the time to be here. You could spend your time anywhere that you spend it with us. We are so grateful for. We love being a part of your life, a part of your journey. So thank you for letting us in and thank you for being a part of mine. We'll be back with our fourth and final episode about manifesting here on Well Seekers. How would you like to join the conversation? Email us anytime at hello at wellseekers.com.